So this is one of the most beautiful crystals I think I've ever cut. Come to think of it, it is the best crystal I've ever cut. G'day and welcome to Black Opal Direct. My name's Justin. Well, I was in Lightning Ridge recently and I managed to buy a piece of opal, a fossil opal. It's actually a shell of one of the most craziest crystals I've seen in a long time. Now this piece is one glassy gem. It's gonna have, in my opinion, the best 3D color on color around. So let's get cutting this beautiful gem. You may be asking me, why am I going to cut a fossil into an opal? And sometimes the opal's worth way more than the fossil value, and this is the case. Let's get on the wheel. So here is our beautiful crystal opal. Um, it's a fossil shell, but I just want to show you how clean it is. I get the gem torch out and we just shine through. You can see it's clear, clean as a whistle. And I can imagine only what it feels like when a knobby like this falls out of the chute on the uh, washing table in the mining fields when it's glowing already with a clean skin as it is and ready to be cut into a beautiful, beautiful gem. So we'll get the wheel going and um, let's see if we can get a nice shape getting rid of that sharp end and going for a really nice high dome with that beautiful roll going across the stone right on the top of the dome. All right, let's get it going. Even though this is quite an easy cut, well, it's not really. I still have a lot of butterflies. I'm still very anxious about how many carrots I'm going to cut out and whether that play of color is going to stay there when I start shaving bits off. Sometimes when you cut an opal and you take the dome down, the color's never the same again. And this has happened many, many times, especially with opal from Jag Hill. So the thought of this happening to me on this stone, when I think it's one of the best stones I think I've ever cut in the crystal category, makes me very nervous. I haven't seen crystal of this caliber for such a long time, I've forgotten how to cut it, almost. Look at that shape, it's turning out quite nice. I dare say that this opal is going to rival some of the best crystals in my collection. So all we've got left is little bits of inclusions on the skin, which is great. Just got to get them out. We should have a nice clean gem. It looks like things are kind of working out. Geez, that's a big crystal. Imagine if it was this size, but I know I have to bring it in further. There's still a few sand spots that have to come out. In order to make it a perfect gem, we need to make sure it's got no inclusions. A perfect gem is always going to be worth way more than an opal that's not quite cut right. Right about now I'm starting to realise that the back could be better than the front. And I've been working on the front the whole time but is the back even better? I think it could be. And if it is could this end up being in my collection? Too good to let go, maybe. Beautiful, look at that. So at the moment it's 9.97 carats which is a really big crystal. Uh, the little sand spot there I'd like to take out, but my goal is to make it sure 
that it doesn't go below nine carats. So I'll try and get that out, but I can't, I, I really don't want to go below nine carats. So I'll take a little bit more out and see if we can get it out without losing a carat. I'm doubting it, but anyway, we'll try it. Inclusions in a crystal opal of this quality really should come out. You can see those inclusions usually from every angle because the opal is so translucent. So I'm doing my best to get it as clean as possible. Okay, it's out. Took the risk, now we've got to weigh it up and see if it weighs just over nine carats. So this is one of the most beautiful crystals I think I've ever cut and being over nine carats makes it super rare and I have a bit of a dilemma. Both sides are sublime. So I'd love you to leave a comment and tell me which side you like better. The top or the back? Well, the back or the top. This kind of gem brings me back to the days when the Cochrane Opal field was in full swing, finding lots of beautiful black opals and top crystal opals. It was mayhem, everybody was finding them and shipping them out to Japan. It was quite an amazing sight seeing people come in with eskies full of beautiful red on black rough opals and crystals. Those were the days when Lightning Ridge was in full swing. It's not like that anymore. I mean, there are miners madly trying to find new patches, but they're only finding satellite patches, the outskirts, the opal that was not found in the heyday. They're there and there's plenty of it, but finding it is the biggest challenge. About 90% of all the miners since the 80s and 90s have disappeared, and it's only a small bunch of dedicated miners left to find the opal. A few new people have turned up too, which gives us a glimmer of hope. A younger generation wanting to find the elusive opal that's found in Lightning Ridge. They say it takes about seven years to find a decent patch. Well, I have friends up there that have been there for longer than that and haven't, but I've also seen people up there that have found it very quickly. So maybe an average of seven years is pretty right. Now the gem's nearly completed, the pressure is really off and I can enjoy just watching this beautiful gem come to life. I'm not sure the camera will be able to pick up its actual beauty. Because of the depth and the height of the dome, getting a focus from the top all the way to the bottom of the gem is close to impossible but it's got layers upon layers. It's amazing, truly amazing. Yep, I think this one's gonna have to end up in my collection. I just can't let it go. It's too beautiful. Finding another gem of this caliber is pretty much close to impossible. And once I've sold it, I'm never going to see it again. So I think I need to. I need to keep it. I have fallen in love with it. Time to give it its polish. To give it that absolute luster that it deserves. I also polished the back, but I didn't film it, but I can show you it. The back, in my opinion, is off the planet, out of this world. 
And I'm so glad I got to share this one with you. What an experience to see this one come to life. So finally finished both sides of this stone, beautifully polished. I gotta say, I can't decide whether the front or the back, or the back or the front, which way is the best. There's so much depth to this gem. It weighs 8.60 carats, so it's one of the biggest crystals I've ever actually cut. And with that beauty, um, I couldn't be more happier. It's a stone that belongs in my collection. What a beauty. Well, that was one honor to cut a stone as beautiful as that. And I'm glad you came along for the journey. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. As for a price on this gem, I'm undecided. I can't figure out what it's actually worth because I've seen nothing that compares.